Ever since the first humans lifted their eyes at night, the glow of the sky, dotted with thousands of stars, has sparked questions that still echo. What lies beyond our horizon? How far can we go? Curiosity, paired with technological progress, pushed us out of Earth's cradle. We, with our fragile bodies, barely reached the moon. But the machines we built, incapable of fear or fatigue, have crossed distances none of us could endure. These silent travelers brought back clues about the universe out there. And, among them, two sisters stand out. The Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 probes. The most distant human-made objects ever. How far has the fastest one gotten? And what does that really mean? That's what we're going to uncover in today's video. One, we have ignition and we have liftoff. Voyager 2 launched first on August 20th, 1977. Its plan was to visit Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, but the gravitational dance of the solar system handed it an irresistible prologue, a rendezvous with Jupiter. That stop wasn't in the original script, yet it yielded an extraordinary harvest. As it passed the largest planet in the solar system, the probe imaged Ganymede and Europa in enough detail for scientists to infer the existence of subsurface oceans on those moons. A possibility that, to this day, fuels the search for potentially habitable environments. Next, at Saturn, Voyager 2 measured temperature and magnetic field and identified new satellites, expanding the catalog of worlds orbiting the Lord of the Rings. The journey continued, and with it, more firsts. On January 24, 1986, Voyager 2 performed the only flyby of Uranus ever conducted by a probe, returning images and data on the planet, its dark rings, its tilted magnetic field, and its moons. Three years later, on August 25, 1989, it repeated the feat at Neptune, the most distant planetary encounter ever, which confirmed that both Uranus and Neptune have dark rings made of dust and frozen rock. Neptune's gravity, however, bent the probe's fate beyond what was planned, ejecting it for good out of the ecliptic, the track along which most solar system bodies orbit. That meant it couldn't approach other major targets in our cosmic neighborhood. On the other hand, a new chapter opened, investigating the environment between the stars. That's how Voyager 2's mission took on a pioneering role in the nearby interstellar space. The probe began observing the plasma between stars, detecting cosmic winds, measuring the extent of the heliosphere, this bubble sustained by the solar wind, and refining stellar distance measurements from its new vantage point. Today, it sits about 128 astronomical units from Earth, just over 19 billion kilometers, widening the gap at roughly 15.3 kilometers per second impressive numbers, and yet humble on the cosmic scale. It's estimated to take about 42,000 years before it passes near Ross 248, a red dwarf a mere 10 light years away in galactic terms. And around 300,000 years in the future, it should pass within 4.3 light years of Sirius, which today is 8 light years from Earth, still a vast distance but the closest that trajectory will bring it to that famous star. It's curious to think that a human artifact can travel so far and still remain invisible. The truth is, we can't directly observe such a small object at those distances. It disappears into the darkness between the stars. And that's where the more famous sister comes in. Voyager 1 launched a few days later on September 5th, 1977. Yes, we have ignition, we have a liftoff. With the main task of exploring Jupiter and Saturn, early on, its gaze revealed features we now consider classics. Detailed storms in Jupiter's atmosphere, new satellites around the giant, and, surprisingly, a subtle system of thin, dark rings around it. The masterstroke came with Io, the data showed intense volcanic activity, the first detected proof of volcanism beyond Earth, a powerful reminder that seemingly dead worlds can host dramatic internal processes. When Voyager 1 was conceived, expectations called for a short mission, about five years long, 
collect data from the gas giants and vanish into the vastness. But the unlikely happened. It stayed alive far beyond that deadline. It crossed the Kuiper Belt region, this band of icy objects beyond Neptune, about 4.5 billion kilometers from the sun, and kept going. Today, it's at the boundary of the heliopause, the limit where the solar wind is finally halted by the interstellar medium. This shell around our stellar bubble lies at roughly 160 astronomical units from the sun, about 24 billion kilometers. That's where Voyager 1 is, holding the title of the most distant human object from home. But distance isn't the same as being outside the solar system. To truly escape the sun's domain, it still has to cross an even more remote frontier, the Oort cloud. Picture a spherical cocoon populated by countless comets extending out to about 50,000 astronomical units, around 7.5 trillion kilometers. Only after passing through that region could we say the probe has definitively left the solar system. And that will be a very long-running drama. Voyager 1 will still take tens of thousands of years to reach and cross that diffuse frontier. And only then will it head into interstellar space without looking back. After that, its route wasn't planned to meet any specific destination. It's a consequence of the initial push and the gravitational tides that shaped it. One of the closest stellar encounters its trajectory promises, about 10,000 years from now, will be with the star Gliese 445, a red dwarf roughly 17 light years away. Nothing cinematic, just a pass at an interstellar distance still enormous, like a balloon carried by the wind that brushes a treetop and moves on. It's beautiful and melancholic at the same time, a reminder that our messengers are persistent, even when no one can hear them anymore. And that silence is closer than we think. Around 2025, the energy generated by the radioisotope thermoelectric generators, the Voyager's hearts, runs down to the point that it can no longer power instruments and transmitters. When the silence arrives, the signals will stop reaching us and the probes will continue mute forever. Voyager 1, in fact, shut down its cameras long ago to save power. If, for a moment, we could turn them on now, we wouldn't see a spectacular firmament. The sun would appear only about 16 times brighter than the full moon in our night sky, and the rest would be a backdrop of darkness with no contrast. To see anything truly remarkable, we'd have to fast forward thousands of years, by which time the probe's electronics will already have died. If the instruments will fall silent, the message remains. Aboard both Voyagers travels a copper record plated with gold, a disc with sounds and images of Earth. It carries portraits of emblematic places, such as Christ the Redeemer in Brazil, the Great Wall of China, and New York's urban skyline, records of animals and nature, and greetings in several languages. It's a bottled hello cast into the cosmic ocean, a gesture of hope in case some other intelligence stumbles upon it in the future, and, from those clues, realizes that we were here once, curious, noisy, and eager for company. Looking at the whole, the Voyagers stand as symbols of an era when we chose to explore with what we had best, ingenuity, patience, and scientific rigor. They revealed worlds, corrected hunches, and opened new questions about hidden oceans, extraterrestrial volcanism, tilted magnetic fields, and the true extent of our solar bubble. Voyager 2, now more than 19 billion kilometers away, advances in silence toward stellar neighborhoods that will only be crossed on timescales beyond our grasp. Voyager 1, even farther, grazes the skin of the heliosphere, while reminding us that leaving the solar system is much more than passing Neptune's orbit. It's overcoming a gravitational architecture that stretches for trillions of kilometers. It's natural to ask, if we already know they won't reach anywhere in the everyday sense of the word, why celebrate them? Because the value of these missions isn't in planting flags, but in widening the map of what is knowable. They turned suppositions into measurements, gave faces to points of light, and taught us to compare storms, craters, rings, and auroras with data in hand. 
They showed that the universe isn't a static void, but a tangle of flows. Solar wind, energetic particles, fields, and shocks that shape invisible boundaries like the heliopause. In every bit of information they transmitted, there's a reminder that the cosmos may seem indifferent, but it answers when we know how to ask. Of course, there will be a last packet of data, a final beep, crossing the dark to our antennas. After that, only the trajectory remains. The voyagers will wander for ages beyond our memory, crossing planes and gravitational currents, invisible to telescopes and undetectable to the eye. And yet their persistent presence will carry something of ours, the idea that we were able to send a trace of rational thought beyond our atmosphere, with instructions, greetings, and our enduring curiosity. Even silent, they'll keep telling the same story, just in another way, like technological fossils of a species that wanted to understand its place. If you've made it this far, it's because this story speaks to you too. Thinking of 42,000 years to Ross 248, 300,000 years for a distant pass by Sirius, tens of thousands of years to clear the Oort cloud, all of that feels overwhelming, but it isn't discouraging, it's liberating. It shows we don't need to reach the end to start learning. Each leg, from Jupiter to Neptune, from the Kuiper Belt to the Heliopause, has already changed how we see our cosmic backyard. And in the end, that's what matters. Expanding the horizon of what we know, one flyby at a time, one radio beam at a time, one golden record at a time. The two sisters we launched in 1977 weren't just scientific missions. They were acts of imagination. Soon their instruments will fall quiet, and the signals will stop pinging on our charts. Even so, they'll remain the ultimate travelers. Not because they'll reach a triumphant destination, but because they keep moving. And perhaps that's the truest portrait of who we are. If this journey inspired you, you already know the next step. Leave a like, subscribe, and share. It helps a lot and costs nothing. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.